Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning back in. Long time no see. Uh, we are slowly getting back to a um, situation of normality, I should say. But we are uh, we're doing a rewire at the moment. I'll give you a quick walk around. We've been tasked with rewiring this place. So the fuse board, it's a big setup. They've got Lutron and uh, all sorts going on here. There's probably going to be a triple stack board here. There's a Lutron board going here. We've got three six by six trunkings here, which have gone in. Um, with just some T pieces and the main intake is over there and these this is what we've wired up so far but I'll show you upstairs this down here is going to be like a I think it's just a garage down here um, and the plan is we've got one of these six by six trunkings going to be for power which is this one here one's going to be for the Lutron lighting and one's going to be for data so we just keep them all separated uh, upstairs I'll show you around so we've got a big open space we've got it's actually it's a lovely place to, to rewire we've got uh, stud on the ceilings we've got stud on the walls and stud on the windowsill yes uh, so this is the basic plan um, he's got track lighting going all the way down there there's a lot of track lighting in here so tracks are all here uh, and all of the Lutron switches we haven't wired any of the Lutron yet but we've started pulling in the cables for the track lighting. We're using this, um, it's like a five core, yeah, it's a five core, it's basically a five core FP200. That's what they need for the lights here for some reason. So that's what we're fitting. It's an absolute pain to wire it, I've got to be honest. When there's two of you, it's all right, but big, heavy, flexy, chunky cables like that on your own. Well, you wired it on your own, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah. Fun times. Kitchen's going in there. So he apparently he's having four ovens. Well, one, one isn't enough, so we're having four. Four ovens, two fridges, and then there's an island here with another fridge freezer. Uh, obviously got a lot of champagne to keep cold, I'm guessing. Oh, I'll show you over here. Started putting the sockets in. I haven't, got, I haven't finished it yet. I'll give you a proper tour in a second. But downstairs where all those big trunkings are, these are the trays which rise up. So again, we've got power and then we've got the Lutron stuff and then data is going to be going on this one. I've got to tie all these in. So all of these white ones here, these are the five cores. These are all going to be for the track lighting. So I've left them all loose at the minute, but once we've pulled everything in, then we'll go through neatly and just zip tie them and get them all looking smart. So that's those. Um, I'll show you outside because we've had a bit of a switch up with vehicles and stuff because um, we sold the traffics because they just didn't fit highways work. So I'll show you the new, uh, the new vehicles. Yeah, so we had a bit of a, a switch up with vehicles. So we ended up getting rid of, we got rid of the traffics because the more I thought about it, they just don't. This was actually, it was an ongoing thing behind the scenes, um, just trying to work out what the best thing to do with them is because they don't quite fit. So we got rid of both of those. And then the Kangoo got rid of that one as well because the more I think about it, it made sense just to get one of these. So that's what we did. We had a double cab, uh, double cab drop side, which just works. It works infinitely better. It really does. Isn't it, Jay? We've off, since we've had this, the only downside is the length of it. It's an L3, but that is literally the only downside it has, isn't it? We have often, yeah, it's big to park, but that, if you ignore that, there, this literally has no downsides. It just, it's the perfect, it's probably like, why would you not have one? Yeah. Um, I mean, just but just spend three grand on injectors on it. But if we ignore that, it's all right. I was going to get a new one, and I was seriously looking at the Iveco. Uh, there's an I, the Iveco uh, Iveco Daily Tipper, um, and that's a really good bit of kit. But it's like forty grand. And the more I was looking at it, I was like, I can buy this one because you remember I was in one. My, I think it was my last video actually. I was looking at the low floor traffic management vehicles, the TMVs. I ended up going with this purely for resale because this you can I can resell this like that all day with a with a low floor TMV they're a bit more specialist and it's a bit harder to sell so and Jay wanted the grill so I had to I had to satisfy him and put the grill on it is quite a nice grill actually I, I do like those grills they're quite cool so yeah he wanted that <laughs> three grand on engine repairs <laughs> 70 quid for a new grill but yeah, a couple of you were actually in one of the one of the last videos we did last year. We're talking about the deadlocks for the cherry picker. I have actually been down to Sussex Installations actually and went and got those fitted. I'm going to drop that video. I'll either drop it in now or I'll drop it in at the end of this video. I'm not sure where, but there's some good content there which I wanted to show you. So that will be coming up either now or at the end of the video. We're here. We're at Sussex Installations. 
Uh, this was the place I came with the Renault Traffics um, to get all the locks and everything done. And the bucket truck is in there now. It's having uh, the locks on the cab doors and on the loading door, and it's having an alarm fitted to it as well, because I didn't realize it hasn't got one from the factory. Yes, I'm, I'm taking the camera in hand today because uh, I text the camera guy last night telling him the address to come down today because it's all the way in Sussex and uh, I think he sort of, he cowed out of it. He was like, oh, it's a bit far for me. So I'm taking the camera in hand today as you do. I had the Kangoo, you know, the little electric one. Had that broken into uh, about a week ago. Uh, same usual procedure, a little hole on the back door. Uh, they broke into it, nicked all the Bosch gear. Highly irritating. And by the way, if you're watching, whoever you are, I sincerely hope you get, I, honestly, I hope you're involved in a car accident. And when you, when, once you've had the accident and you get out of the car, you then get hit by an oncoming truck. Honestly, that's all I hope for you. People like you deserve to bleed to death in the streets, quite frankly. Bloody annoying. But I've sold the Kangoo now, by the way. That's gone. Um, I've been thinking loads about it, whether to keep it, whether to not keep it. And in the end, I just weighed up my options. And I was like, I'm paying 180, I think it's like 180 a month, 186 a month for that van. And I was like, you know what? It doesn't make any sense to keep it because I can actually, um, I can use that 180 a month uh, on a better vehicle, which is what I've done. I've put down a deposit on one of these. Um, a five ton cherry picker. A lot of you actually, you know when I was talking about the highways work, a lot of you were coming up with the same uh, the same thing. I was, I was talking about signage and putting barriers. I need, I need a vehicle that I can transport all that in. Quite a few of you turned around and said the same thing, just get a five ton cherry picker. So I have to have an, uh, a category C license on my driving license, but that's not, um, you know, a week I can do that. That's not too big a problem. So it's going to take about nine months before it gets to me, which is a bit of a doozy, but it's not the end of the world. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is look for a just a, a relatively uh, a relatively budget, uh, like a twin cab tipper or something, which will get us going on highways, which is the next thing I want. Oh, it's all change, isn't it? It's, uh, there's a lot of change. Uh, but yeah, the Kangoo's gone. Uh, I just decided in reality it just wasn't worth. It does have uses, but not as many uses as a tipper would have on highway or a drop side. So hence it's gone. There's other bits going on as well. I've got, I've got a piece of land I own, which I'm trying to get planning permission on. As soon as I get planning on it, I want to sell it and then use that money, uh, inject some of that money into, into the business. So there's, there's a lot going on which people don't, don't see. There's a lot, of, a lot of pots on the stove. To be fair, that land's been sat there for about two years. I've not done anything with it. And I've just started picking it up now to get planning on it. So yeah, here's a new setup. It's quite a cool, uh, they've got proper press machines and everything now. Yeah, they're just putting these, uh, these locks on the, on the cab doors. And then they're just putting these ones in the top and bottom of the side loading door. When they were putting the locks on this, they were looking at, uh, they keep spare doors, which they, can, uh, which they can use to make these, with the metal machining systems that they've got now, they can make these internal shield plates. And they took one of these Renault Master doors and uh, they can just, uh, they take all the measurements and everything, and then they can uh, put all of these stainless steel protection plates on the inside door. But the great thing is, is they build them all themselves now. They haven't got to buy these in. They can just literally, they can just machine it and make it themselves. Ah, that's actually it there. That's literally how they cut it out. It is such a cool piece of equipment. It's such a cool bit of kit. Again, another one of those machines that I bought and didn't work when I bought it. But in the end, we got it to work perfectly. I just had to, had to replace these columns, they were all rusted and it wasn't, the cordon wasn't working. I mean, it's fantastic really when you think, you know, that's just been formed out of a piece of straight stainless over there and just spot weld it. And one thing I've definitely found is fitting, fitting these locks, you know, to try and get that that neat and to get that end result there. I mean, that is, there's no doubt about it. I mean, that really is. To get something so neat like that is a skill, you know, there's not, I'm just saying, that's not the sort of thing really you could you could do it yourself but i mean i think it would take you infinitely longer but yeah double cab so it's a good bit of kit and that is um 
that'll keep us going for the time being. We've ordered, um, I ordered the, again, going back on the last video, the cherry picker that you guys were talking about, a lot of you said the same thing, get a five ton cherry picker for signs and cones and stuff. Um, I ordered one from Versalift in the end, so, but that's not, that's about 12 month wait on that, so that's not gonna be arriving anytime soon. Uh, but other than that, it's a nice bit of kit. Uh, so that's vehicles, that's where we are at the moment. Hello, boss. Hello, boss. <laughs> you, you enjoy smelling now, boss. I love it in here today. Better than last time. Oh, good, boss. Okay. Good. <laughs> I expect better from you, lad. You're just a camera guy. You're not. You, you turned Tom into an animal. <laughs> oh, this is disgusting. Oh, that's disgusting. Right, now we've just left the job which we were on a second ago, the one you've just seen, and we've just headed up to, I mean, just headed up, I specifically wanted to come up here. This is Trafex. Now this is, as you know, the highways and uh, highway stuff we're getting into. And this is like, imagine CEF Live, but just for highway stuff. And it's literally just stall after stall, and it's just all like AMPR cameras, bus lane cameras, bodybuilders like this, all of this sort of stuff. Aren't these trucks beautiful? There's one company here, this um, Aclia, and they're bodybuilders. You basically free issue, you free issue the chassis cab to them and they put the body on it. But this 7.2 ton Iveco, absolutely stunning bit of equipment. Is that not the most beautiful interior? I think that's such a lovely interior and so well thought out. Everything from like the reversing cam to the LED board at the back so you can basically have whatever arrow, directional arrow. If it's in the highway code, the board will do it. And then you've got all the things like the cone wells and I like all the sandbag cupboards. But like the, the build quality, I mean, it really is, a, it's, the quality honestly is just, it's so beautifully, just everything is so neatly put together. It's like Sortimo, you know the quality that Sortimo build their stuff at? Honestly, it's the same as this. It's just such a beautiful, and they've built it. Whoever, whoever designed it, was working highways at some point because just like everything even down like to the metal catch plates and stuff it's just designed for people who are just heavy-handed you know it's just it's lovely chunky it's such beautiful equipment but yeah i've literally we've just this is actually one of the first stalls we've been to so we're going to have a look around um, and just see what some of the other stores i mean there's ampr cameras and all this sort of stuff there's a load of stuff going on here so we'll have a walk around and uh once I finish drooling here, I'll uh, catch up with you in a bit. Do you remember back a couple of months back when I said I was shopping around for one of these and I was looking at like these low floor TMVs? Well, this is one of them. And again, they're like a bodybuilder. They just take a, a stock vehicle, a chassis cab, and they put all, the, all this equipment on. But again, the quality of them is so, you really get the feeling this is a competitive market, you know, and manufacturers are really, especially when it's like custom stuff like this, they make such an effort to keep the quality super, super high. This is where the generator and everything is for uh, power and all that sort of stuff for the signboards and stuff. But beautiful equipment, such neatly put together. The only reason I went with the transit in the end was I figured a drop side might have, it's sort of the the mix of the best of both worlds. This is just purely highways. And where I am at the moment, where I'm doing, we're doing a bit of commercial, we're doing a bit of highways, I figured drop side would work better. But I see this and I'm like, I'm really smitten with it because they're just such nice vehicles. Beautiful bits of kit though, they really are. That is really deceiving. I was just trying to, I looked at this on the floor and I was like, just how easy it is to lift up. I mean, it's just, and you can just leave it. You can just put it as far as you want. Beautiful equipment, it really is. Celtic who came up with this idea of having a hinged signboard so you can pull the signboard away and you've still got the tailgate at the back to load the pike traffic lights or whatever. This is the great thing like what I was saying about CEF Live where you just don't see any of this stuff this is such cool stuff that you see at these sort of traffic events. This is livable cities right they've got this system and you know how you get the photo so you know the NEMA sockets on photo cells which we always fit well, they, these, this company have come up with this idea and it's so it's such a simple idea, but they've just taken it a step further. You just unattach, that's your NEMA socket, which you know when you buy it on, when you go to the wholesaler, that's your NEMA socket. Unclick your photo cell and then you can just literally click in your new module, whatever you want it to be, whether you want it to be this one, CCTV. What's this one? Speed, isn't it? Speed radar. radar. That one's noise, that one's noise quality and that one's air quality, isn't it? Air an air quality unit. 
and you see a lot of these if you go down um, if you go down uh, King's Cross Euston Road you see you not you don't see this actual city, but you see the air quality units because these have become much much more popular so I can see things like this really taking off in the next in the next few years in fact yeah this is what you do you don't click it that's it that unclicks and that's yeah that would be your photo cell for instance that would be your photo you'd have on and you would literally just turn up unclick it and that's your air quality unit which just clicks in place and that's it you just walk away so it's cool stuff and then if you want to have two they have this system where they click that in into the top of the NEMA socket it gives you a NEMA socket there so you can still click in whatever the councils if they I don't know maybe if they want to have their own photo cell or whatever or if you want to have air quality and you want to have CCTV for instance click that in there and then that just you can either clip that to the side of the column but then you've got two so you haven't got to interfere with the manufacturer's column I'm just speaking with a cameraman just off cam like this is like basically like a billion pound idea I don't understand how no one is take because like the uptake on this is still a lot of councils some councils they're just saying Westminster are now trialing it how come this isn't nationwide this seems like such a clever idea. imagine we were just saying if there's like an accident on a road somewhere you could just literally you know police could just ring up ah oh, yo can you just give us the the live street can you give us the footage for lamppost four five four six and four seven and you can just instantly bang you can play back everything that happens imagine how much knowledge and just i just don't understand how this isn't everywhere it is such a simple idea and like if this camera goes down for whatever reason you just literally take it off because it's just got copper contacts and just you just pop a new one on bang that's it I just I don't understand how this is like a multi-billion pounds like the size of Siemens I, it just doesn't because it's such a simple idea I don't get it we were just finishing we're just on our way out and we just stopped this company here called SRL and you see these you might see them in your local area where they're doing like long-term temporary traffic lights so they can't have battery power because it's too short term but they don't want to have permanent installations yet so this is the solution they just have it's powered from a box here which is basically fed from a feeder pillar and then they just have the cabling which runs overhead but that box there is what controls it but it's a neat setup so you'll see that if you ever see this setup you'll see one of these boxes somewhere on the side of the road and basically that is how it's all it's all modular it's all plug and play they just literally put it they just take it off a truck dump it on the side of the road next to a feeder pillar and then that's where the traffic lights connect in and then on the back of the traffic light you see all the connections up there on the back of the traffic light it's literally plug and play so they just literally put all the lights in and just click 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 and they pre-program it before it gets to site and they literally just switch it on and that's it so it's but they can make because it's digital they can make it so that you can have like if you've got a really busy intersection and you want to time how long each light if you want to customize how long everything's going to be on for how long the green man comes on for you just program it all through there and you can do it on the fly so if you ever wonder how these things work it's these boxes here that's what controls it all so i thought it was quite neat but we're off now we're going to head back to site now so the next clip you see we us back in uh where's the road we're working here's central london uh, great portland street that's where we're working i'll see you back there in a sec so this is the upstairs so this is what you're standing in well what you're watching now is bedroom one and then out here bedroom two all of it's metal walling again which is actually it's so nice for running cables in this is the bathroom ensuite um, another bedroom over there then that's the other bedroom for this ensuite I needed some, I'd had to hire in some labour, right? And um, I tried all the usual places, couldn't find anyone. It's the only one who was available. Jimbo! 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 Yeah, I'll uh, find someone who would do a proper job. Here, so. <laughs> He's so full of himself. <laughs> but he was so impressed with my cable clipping, it's just made him feel a bit awkward, yeah. you know? Because he couldn't have done it that well. That's all what, it is. This, this dog's dinner. <laughs> 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 yeah, easy fuck. These air handling pipes, they've put them underneath the ensuite, and it's so bit trying to get all those cables down there is a real mission. But you see the um, these white ones here, these are the cables for the light because he's having Lutron here. So this is the uh, Dali control cable, and no, the Dali cable we haven't pulled in yet. But these are four core 
Because he wants to, he's got tracks going in, and he wants to be able to have different switch wires for the tracks. So he's got a choice of three. Yeah, three, three in a neutral. So it's a four core. Um, but yeah, it's basically a, it's four core and earth FP two hundred essentially. That's what it is. Absolute bastard to pull in. It's so. It's just the most unmalleable stuff to pull in. It took ages, but they're in. We then got. We've got a four core flex. There's a cutout in the ceiling with a hatch. And there's going to be transformers in the ceiling, which are going to feed an LED strip in the corners. So we've just left these down here for the second and we put one in each corner. So each corner of the room's got one of these, just to give us a little bit of, um, in case there's a cable that's damaged or if they want to add another strip at some point, there's lots and lots of choice and flexibility. So he's got that in every single room. Oh, sorry. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I miss him, but I don't miss him. Where's your camera? I thought you'd be here with a full, full recording team, like ground force. I thought you'd hide under a rock, so, you know, I didn't want to intrude. Did you even bring it today? I bet you bought it, though. Yeah, I did. Yeah, boy, yeah. Uh, it's always in the van. It's always in the van. Surprised your van made it, to be fair. <laughs> Each bedroom's going to have its own radial circuit, so there'll be three radials for the bedrooms up here. Fuse board downstairs is going to have about 40 circuits on it. There's a lot of cabling going into this place. I mean, up there, I'll show you quickly. This is all the air handling units, but up there is going to be a data cabinet. And basically, from the basement where the telephony and everything comes in, we're running this cable here. Check these bad boys out. It's basically four... It's four Cat 6s inside one cable. And you sound like 500 pound a drum. I mean, it's just mad money, but it's nice gear. So we've got two of those going to feed the data cabinet and those basically run all the way down these trays in the riser down to the basement. Oh, sorry, sorry, bus, sorry, bus, sorry, bus, sorry, sorry, bus, please. I'm sorry, bus, sorry, I work quick. That's all the lighting control cables. We've pretty much run all the lighting in now, I think, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Lighting's all, except this floor here, so there's going to be a few more going Demo! in. But that's all the lighting cables, which are all going to go to a Lutron board over there. And then these are all the T&Es. This is basically for the top floor and the kitchen. We haven't actually... Actually, there's still quite a few to run in. We've still got the towel rails to run in. We've got the sockets in bedroom three. We've got the... Um, washer dryer circuit we've got to run in there's and whatever is it yeah there's a good there's a lot more cable yet yeah, to run in it's a great way of working because it means everything has its own rcbo so it's like super it's super easy to uh, do fault finding in the future and also if there's ever any if there's an rcd trips later it's literally just going to take out one little area so it's great for that but it's just a lot of it's a lot of cost to run in all of this cabling well, I've explained it. I needed labour. I, I rung everybody in London. I couldn't... Oh, yeah, you did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, really I just... Work. We needed some help on this, on that job there. Trying, me and Jay trying to do it on our own is just too much. Um, but... Last resort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. Um, yeah. You just popped down for the day. I did. But... Picked up some racking. You didn't want to. Yeah, he took the racking out of the kangaroo, actually. Yeah. Shall I show him the... Yeah. Let's have a... Put a few kilos in his van. I'm sure you'll be seeing a video of that on his channel. Yes, you will. Yeah. I might even give the carpentry a go myself. What's that logo about? No. <laughs> What's no. that logo about? It's just deceiving. It's not as easy as. No, I can't imagine it is. But try it, yeah. But yeah, um, that is all we've got time for this week. We are going to try and get back to a more even keel. Problem is, half the problem we've got is that, like, like, that work we did the other night was night work. We're not allowed to show that. We're not allowed to say where we're working. We're not allowed to post pictures. I can, I can use the pictures on a case study on a website, but I can't use it on social media. It's like, it's like yeah. You can use it as a case study, but you can't use it on like Instagram or social media. So you can't say where you work and you can't say, you know, and it's like, there is cool stuff with that. Like, well, we can't talk yet. Yeah. Yeah. You're not allowed to. So, so many cool it's like, all, yeah. All you, all you ever see now is just like the domestic stuff that we do or whatever commercial. Yeah. yeah, the race to the bottom stuff. That's all you ever see. So yeah, we're going to end it there. Thank you very much for watching. It's awesome to have Jimbo back for a day. 
I'm going to do it. I think he's going to get bored I of can't Wales. I wait to get back to Wales. He's lying. I come down here at half four this morning, traffic, straight and away. Late, get me back to Wales now. Turn up at quarter past eight. Yeah, turn up at quarter past eight. Oh God, one minute past. <laughs> one minute past it was, and I left at half four. Anyway, we're going to love you and leave you. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to get back to more content soon. Um, yeah. What do you want to say? Walk one, general. Walk one. Walk one. That's all right. Outtakes. Are we ending the video here? Or are we starting it here? No, we're. I don't fucking know. The boys are back in town. I will receive. All I'm saying is just camera. It needs to be a bit, you know, proactive. You know. Stand in there with his hands. Stop, stop tugging. And yeah. Filming stop. Well, I was fucking helping, lads. Oh, you I'm just... There's no proof of it. The camera wasn't on. See, if the cameraman, yeah, what you could do is you could film and pull the other, pull the rest of this with the other arm. Oh, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See? This is what I put up with. Somebody on Fix Radio, they did five kilogram bag of two prey. And they did something like four minutes. It was like mad, but he was he was properly built. So we're gonna do this. It's awkward to hold, mind, but we're gonna give it a go. Did it the other day, did about a minute and fifteen, wasn't it? Ready? Yeah. <sighs> what was that? What have you got? Minute twenty-five. Yeah. <sighs> it's hard though. Yeah, I mean I was making it easy, you know. <laughs> that, is, that is tough. Hey, yeah, go on, get Jimbo, get Jimbo in there. Go on, another go, another go. Another go, another go. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Alright, ready? What is that angle, mate? Oh, hang on, alright, stop. Reset, reset, reset. Straight. <laughs> oh, Ready? yeah. One, two, three. Go on, you got this. Go on. Oh, really less, you have to tell us. Tell work today, and you must not have that. Is he working hard, mind? I've been carrying your bows. <laughs> Go on. Right, it's well, your man, turn man, now. Go on. on. I'm trapped. No, 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 come on. No, no, come on, you've got this. No, come on. Look, girls, chi boys. chicks dig this sort of stuff. Tell All right. <laughs> Ready when you are. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, that's all right. That is the old. That's, the yeah, that is the old. That's the old one, isn't it? Like, he's got. A, he's got a one that's broken, and he's got a brand new one. That was from the factory. They opened it up. Bear in mind, this is like eight, nine hundred quid, apparently. What that? Yeah, this manifold. Right, apparently, he's, <laughs> no point. He's got a. The factory casting shot. Brand new, it's like 800 quid. Casting's gone. Does that mean gone. Jimbo's buying the drinks he lost? I, 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 at the top earlier? Really? No, but we don't have the rule at that time. This is the rule, you're buying the drinks. You go. I we should do a different challenge. He's only here because he wants the racking out the kangaroo. It's the only reason. I can't deny that. Oh, but we, we missed him. We did miss him, yeah. But I don't think he missed us. I think he's glad to go. I think he's glad to go. I was driving up here this morning. As soon as I hit traffic, I was like, turn back around. I had enough. I had enough. That's enough for me.